I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Do It Christ Way, a cooperative effort of the Metroplex Area Churches of Christ. Get your Bibles and join us as we study and let the scriptures teach us Christ Way. You'd open your Bible and turn with me to the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. And we'll pick up at verse 2 and verse number 3, verses that were read in your hearing. The Bible says this, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I'd like to look again at verse number three, the latter part, where the Bible says, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Our subject for the next few minutes is the people of God the people of God. If you've ever read your book of Revelation in this chapter, we realize and can see that the people of God enjoy special privileges and a special position with God. John tells us that he dwells in the midst of his people. And that's a special place to be in the midst of Almighty God. And we read further and we find that they don't need any sun. They don't need any moon, for they dwell in the glory of the Father and the Son and don't need any other light. John looked and said, Behold, I saw no temple in it. There's no need to have a temple, to have a worship facility anymore, because we are in the imminent uh, proximity to God Almighty. And so being in God's presence and being the people of God carries with it certain privileges. We live in a world today where wars are being waged in the name of God. We find people willing to kill and be killed uh, in the name of being the people of God. And they believe that those who uh, walk contrary to how they see God's word or how they understand teaching from God are worthy of death. But God tells us that those whom he loves, he chastises. And so we want to look at the people of God, and we want to look at how they became the people of God, and then we'd like for you to understand the special privileges that go along with being the people of God. You don't have to start any further in your study than to go back to Adam. And Adam, who God made, he made people, right? Adam was the first man, and then he made Eve. God made people for a purpose. The Bible tells us that God and Adam walked in the garden in the cool of the day. Yeah. God made Adam for his companionship, but Adam sinned. And Adam broke and transgressed and uh, destroyed the relationship that he had with God. And then God made another people. God called Abraham, Abram at the time, Abraham later, uh, son of Terah. And the Bible says that he told Abraham to get up out of his father's country and go to a land that I will show you. And then we find the Bible says that Abraham hearkened unto God's word. And he took his wife, Sarah, and his nephew, Lot, and he got up out of his father's country as God showed him. These are the beginning of God's people. The beginning of God's people. Let's look first then at Adam. The Bible teaches us that Adam is the father of all mankind. He is the first man. He was the first woman. And all of us come from Adam and Eve. But that's not all we get from Brother Adam. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 21, the Bible tells us that since by man came death, by man also came 
the resurrection of the dead. And then he goes back to get Adam in verse number 22. What does the Bible say there? For as in Adam. For as in Adam. All die. All die. That's the other thing we get from Adam. Not only <clears throat> did life begin with Adam, death also began with Adam. Adam sinned and brought death into the world. For as in Adam, the Bible says all die, but in the second Adam, the second Adam, what does the Bible say? Even so in Christ. Even so in Christ. Shall all be made alive. Shall all be made alive. Somebody said, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That didn't say anything about the second or, or last Adam, so to speak. Well, let's drop down, if you don't mind, to verse number 45 of the very same chapter. I want to show you something here. In verse number 45, the Bible again re references Adam, the first man. What does it say? And so it is written. So it is written. The first man, Adam. The first man, Adam. Was made a living soul. Was made a living soul. Remember, we said that to find the people of God, you've got to look first at God's first creations. He first created a people when he created Adam. And he created Adam and people sin, destroying the relationship between God and them. And so God uh, uh, had to do it all over again. And he began this process in Abram when he found a man who would do what he asked him to do. Abraham was God's kind of person because Abraham just followed what God told him to do. But as it is written in the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. What else does the Bible say? The last Adam. The last Adam. Was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam. In Adam the first, we got our soul that we either can save or lose. In the last Adam, and, and, and I'm so glad he put it that he didn't just say the second Adam. The spirit didn't just say Adam again. He said the last Adam. There ain't no more after this. When, when you want to see what God is doing with his people, understand first that he created all of us. And he created a human family. And in that human family, he gave us responsibilities in our relationship to him. We understand that there are three covenant or three uh, uh, ways that God dispensed his word uh, in the Bible. From Adam unto Moses, we have the patriarchal dispensation where God uh, dwelt with or, or dealt with rather the heads of the household, the head man, the eldest in every family. And God uh, uh, transmitted and gave his message of what he wanted folk to do through that medium. And that lasted, we say, up until Moses because it is it, during Moses' time that God gave his own people that he had created. That's that second people that we're going to get to in just a minute. We have the human family that all of us belong to. All men everywhere belong to that family. We get that from Adam. And then God had a people that he created out of one man, Abram. And, in, in, and when Abram's seed began to flourish, when Abram's uh, a promise began to be fulfilled. God segregated his people again. And, and he did that. He promised Abraham that all the nations of the world, all of his creation again would be blessed through him. And so we got to understand then that in the first Adam, all of us, we get our soul that we have to save or lose, but we also find death. We find sin in the first Adam. And so God created a people so that he can start this process of making him a people all over again. He started with Abram, and later Abr who became Abraham later. And he created the children of Israel, and he gave them a covenant that was different from anything else he had given anybody else in the world. And the Bible tells us that this was God's people but God, he got drew tired of his people, Jeremiah 31 and verse number 31. God, this, this relationship did not work out too well either. Just like with Adam, when God created people for his purpose and people rejected his purpose by bringing sin into the world, he started over again with Abraham and he created a nation from Abraham to uh, bless the rest of the world through but he drew tired and weary of this people as well. And the Bible's going to tell us, what does the Bible say in Jeremiah 31 and 31? Behold, the days come, said Behold, the Lord. Behold, the Bible said, the days come, 
saith the Lord. That I will make a new covenant. I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel. With the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah. Read. Not according to the covenant. Not going to be like the covenant that I made with them. Read. With our fathers in that day. In that day. That I took them by the hand. That I brought, took them by the hand. Bring them out, of the, them out of, Egypt, of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant This break. is why this didn't work. He did all of this for this people. And when, when he gave them a covenant, they broke it. And because they broke the covenant, they could no longer be the people of God. God's people enjoy a special position and special privileges for a reason. They keep the covenant. They hold on to it. That wasn't all. Keep reading what the Bible says there. Although I was a husband unto God them. God said, I did my part. I was a husband unto them. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant. But this, there's going to be a different one. This shall be the covenant. That I will make. That I will make. With the house of Israel. With the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. After those days, saith the Lord. Read. I will put my law. I'm going to put my law. In their inward part. In their inward part. And right in their hearts. I, you know, no longer table of stone. Let me, let me just say that right here. No longer on the table of stone, I'm going to put my law in their inward part, mm -hmm. in the fleshly table of the heart. Read what the Bible says. And I will write in their hearts. I will write in their hearts. And will be their God. And will be their God. Now notice, this is how we're going to know the people of God. He's going to put the, his law in their inward part. He's going to write his word on their heart. And I'm going to be their God in what? And they shall be my they people. They are going to be who? My people. The people of God Amen. are special because God has made them special. How then do we know? How can we determine the people of God? Well, there's some clues right there. The Bible tells us that he's going to write his law in the inward part and on their heart. These people are going to walk by God's precepts. themselves as special people because they were the children of Abraham and therefore being heirs they believed of the promise of Abraham you know you're heir if you're a child right uh, but 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 the Hebrew right or rather Paul in the book of Romans 2 and 28 says this concerning those who would brag about being heir he said for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither that is circumcision which is outward in the flesh that's not what makes a person the, God, the people of God anymore. That used to be the sign of the covenant. And, and, and Paul is saying that that has changed. How do we know it's changed? Well, Jeremiah prophesied concerning it. Paul said, now this is no longer what makes somebody a child of God, whether they are circumcised in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Doesn't that match what the scripture says? I will put my laws in the inward part. I'm going to write it on their heart. 
He is one which is inwardly in circumcision that is of the heart and in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is of men, not of men rather, but of God. See, it's going to change. And this is going to give us some clues, those whose hearts have been changed. Well, let's go on over there to Hebrews 8 and 8. 8 and 7 first, Brother GT. And, 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 and what does the Bible say over there? For if that first covenant, For if that first covenant had, been faultless, had been faultless, then should no place have been. Listen, I told you that covenant had been replaced. God prophesied it. it was, there was fault found somewhere. What does the Bible say? If, 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 if the uh, first covenant had been faultless, then there'd be no place for the second covenant. Read. For finding fault with them. For finding fault with who? With them. With them. Bible didn't say finding fault with it, the covenant. He found fault with them. The reason God changed his people, the reason God abandoned his covenant with them is because they broke it. They were the ones who were at fault. Remember, he said, I was a husband unto them. And he promised, he repeats the promise that, that, that Jeremiah made in verses 8 and verse number 9. But I've got to go over to the, to the 12th chapter real quick. Uh, uh, all through 8, 9, and 10, read that sometime. All through chapter 11, the Hebrew writer is contrasting the first covenant and the people of the first covenant and that that made them the people of God with that that makes us now. This is a better covenant, the Hebrew writer says, built on better promises. But I want you to know something. God has not changed, and the God, way God treats us has not changed. And in and, and, and the uh, 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews, in verse number 5, we pick up with the story there. And I want to show you something about the people of God and the children of God. What does the Bible say? And ye have forgotten. Ye have forgotten. The exhortation the which speaketh. The exhortation which speaketh. Unto you. Unto you. As unto children. As unto children. Now, this is the people of God. The exhortation that speaks on us as a children. Read. My son. My son. Despise not thou. Despise not thou. The chastening of the Lord. The chastening of the Lord. Now, now watch this now. We're going to get a clue about the people of God here. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. Lord. People of God don't mind being directed by God. Everybody can't say that. We have all the time people arguing with us about, oh, well, we, you know, we don't have to follow the Bible in every place. Does the Bible, they ask us, have to say it for you to believe it? And the answer to that question is yes. Yeah. We only practice as people of God. We, our chastisement, our direction comes from God. Keep reading. Nor faint. Nor faint. When thou art rebuked. Or when him. thou art rebuked. Don't faint when you find out the truth and you're not walking in error. Correct yourself. That's what chastisement is for. Keep reading. For whom the Lord loveth. For whom the Lord loveth. Now, these are his people who have special position, special privileges now. For whom the Lord loveth, what does he do? He chasteneth. He chasteneth. And scourged every son whom he received. He scourged every son whom he received. Read. If you endure chastening. If you endure chastening. God deal it with you as with sons. If you will stand up and abide by God's correction, by the direction that he gives us through his word, then you are his child. That's how we know the people of God. They obey the book. They follow the will of God. And, and if you endure chastening, God deals with you as what? As with his sons. As with sons. Read. For what son is he? For what son is he? Whom the father chasteneth not. Listen, I don't have a son that I have not chastised at some point. I've got five children and I've had to chastise all of them multiple times. There is no son that has not had to be chastised. Come on now. Read verse number nine. Furthermore. Furthermore. We have had fathers. We have had fathers. Of our flesh. Of our flesh. Which corrected us. Who corrected us. And we gave them reverence. I got to go back to verse number eight. Verse number eight. He said, no, 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 no. The father chastens every son in verse number seven. Verse number eight is what I wanted. But if you be without chastisement. But if you be without chastisement. Whereof all are partakers. Listen, if you claiming to be a child of God and are not listening to the direction, the chastening, of the father, read. Then you are bastards and not sons. Then you are bastards and not sons. Sons of God don't run from correction. Paul said that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, 
for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be complete or perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. We don't run from the scripture. People of God don't, 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 don't uh, uh, rationalize scripture. We accept rebuke from the scripture. We accept direction from the scripture. We get everything that we know about God from his word. And if we refuse that, we're not sons of God. We have to endure chastening. Let me move on just quickly to, to, to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Uh, and, 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 and Brother Turner, you hold your finger at verse number 26. But I want to show you something about how we become how we are made children of God. In, in, in the 16th verse, remember, we're a seed of Abraham, right? It was Abraham that was promised that through his seed, all nations of the world would be blessed. Now, in verse number 16, Paul says this, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And, and, and get this now, he says, not as unto seeds. Remember, God's people is a people. It's not multiple people. You don't have multiple prophets out there. You don't have multiple fulfillments. We don't have time to deal with that today. But, but, but there's only one seed of God, one seed of Abraham that is of promise. He said, not unto seeds as of many, but as unto one. And to thy seed, he said, which is Christ. We need to let the world know that to be the people of God, they got to follow Christ. Christ is the author of our salvation. He is the finisher of our faith. And if we refuse, refuse Christ, if we refuse direction, Jesus said it this way. He said, he that rejects me and receive not my words has one to judge him. For the words that I speak, he said, the same are going to judge him in the last day. Now, let's get down and, and bring this to a conclusion. How do we become children of God? How do we become the people of God? Verse number 26, what does the Bible say? For ye are all the children of God. Ye are all the children of God. By faith in Christ Jesus. By faith in that he's talking to the church at Galatia. Everybody listening today and listening here are not children of God. They were all children of God. How? By faith in Christ Jesus. Well, what did they do? Read. For, it, for as many of you. As many of you. As have been baptized as into Christ. have been baptized. Now, we have folks that say baptism is not essential. You can turn on your TV and you'll find people preaching that. You don't have to be baptized. Receive. Listen, sons of God, we don't receive chastisement of the world. We don't receive direction from any place other than the Father. And if we do so, then we're not his. They ended up over there in Revelation 21 with privilege and position to be envied because they endured the chastisement, the direction of God the Father. And they were all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. As many of you, as the Bible says, as have been baptized into Christ, read. Have put on Christ. Have put on Christ. Read. There is neither Jew nor neither Greek. Neither Jew nor Greek anymore. There is neither bond neither nor free. Neither bond nor free anymore. There is neither male nor neither female. Neither male nor female anymore. For you are all one. Ye are all how many? One. One. Where? In, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Read. And if you be ye this of Christ. Christ. And if you be of Christ. If you will follow Christ. Then ye are Abraham's then seed. Then are ye Abraham's. That's how you become the children and the people of God. That's how you get to a position of privilege. You hear the word of God, you believe that. You repented of your sins. That's what he told the church at Galatia. You have confessed. That's what the Bible says we must do. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he rewards those that diligently seek him, Hebrews 11 and 6. You've got to believe. Then you've got to repent. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You know what that means? Somewhere between the belief and the confession, change was made. And when change takes place, when that rebirth comes about, then are we candidates for becoming people of God. Well, where'd you get that repentance from? Well, in Acts chapter 3. Turn there with me if you don't mind. And verse number 19, I want to show you something. Uh, and I want to read this because I want, I want everybody to understand. Acts chapter 3 and, and verse uh, number uh, 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 19. Verse number 19, I want to show you why Christ came and what our response ought to be. In Acts 3 and 19, what does the Bible say? Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. Be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. Listen, our sins are blotted out when we repent and obey. See, repentance 
uh, is not complete without obedience. It, it, it goes together. You can't confess what you don't believe. And, and, and if, you, you know, if you believe the bridge is out down the road, are you going to keep traveling down it at 75 or 80 miles an hour? No. If you believe the bridge is out, you're going to put the brakes on. You're going to turn around, right? You're not going to keep heading in that direction. Repent ye therefore, keep reading, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now remember this. Now they're God's people, and they got that way because God changed them. God chastised them. He refreshed them, if you will. Read. And he, and he shall send Jesus Christ. Shall send who? Jesus Christ. Listen. Christ is the key to this thing. Christ, our faith in Christ Jesus. Remember, he told the church at Galatia that you are all the children of God by faith. In who? In Christ Jesus. Well, what is it about Christ? Uh, 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 Hebrews 12 and 22. Let's, let's, let's end there just quickly. 12 and 22. Uh, uh, and I want to show you something about Christ. There, there's something special about where we have come from and where we have come to. In, in, in uh, verse number 11 of that chapter, we talked about the chastening. He said, now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth peaceable fruit of righteousness to them which are exercised thereby. But in verse number 22, we drop down after he talks about Moses and how great uh, a position Moses was in and how uh, the mountain was terrible, exceedingly so, and, and they trembled, and if a beast touched it, he was either killed or, or thrust through with the spear. But now we come to Mount Zion. Read. But you are come unto Mount Zion. You have come to Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God. Unto the city. Remember, the city came down from God. His people dwelled there. Read. The heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company to of angels. To an innumerable angels, company of angels. To the general, general to the assembly. general assembly. And the church of the firstborn. And the church. See, people minimize that. But the people of God dwell in the church of God. That's what we have come to. And that is of Christ. And we've come to the general assembly and church of what? The firstborn. The firstborn, that's Christ. Read. Which are written in heaven. Which are written in heaven. And to God the judge of all. And to God all, the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men. And to the spirits of just, this is where, this is where it all, the people of God have been made perfect. This is where it happens. The church of God, the church of the firstborn, the general assembly, the new Jerusalem. And this is where God has placed the spirits of his people, just men, who are what? Just men made perfect. Made perfect. That's how you become a child, a person that belongs to God. This has been Let's Do It Christ's Way. We would like to hear from our viewing audience, and as always, we encourage your questions and comments. Or if you're a member of the church and wish to help this broadcast, please send all correspondence to the Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ, 2431 South Marcellus Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216, or call 214-941-2531. You can email us at metroplextv at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you in your study of his word.